Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Hey yo man, it's your time. And fuck poverty. Get this money, man. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Phil and Leroy, the Judgmental Podcast. What's up, everybody? This your boy, Phil. And I'm Leroy. So, what's up, Phil? Nothing much. Boring uh, football week for me since ain't no Eagles playing. But it's still football on. If you're a football fan, it's not boring to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm more, I'm more of an Eagles fan than an NFL fan. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm following the games, but I haven't been watching like diehard fans and shit. The other day, I just turned the game off, and then it turns out to be one of the greatest comebacks in history. Yeah, well, I guess we'll get to that in the sp- in the sports part. But um, the thing I have to say about it, it's it's been some shitty football, and uh, that y- you throw four interceptions and you still win the game. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Four interceptions by by halftime because he threw three in the first quarter and the first yep. quarter and one in the second quarter. So you threw four interceptions in the in the, the first first half and you still win the game. And then we have this game today. We have um, the Buffalo. Well, one thing I can give props to Buffalo for uh, their defense. They got a, a, an inexperienced quarterback. Miami have an inexperienced quarterback. What are they doing? They're doing what we always say that the Eagles should be doing. Blitzing the hell. Yep. Every every time he hikes the ball, he's always on a run. That's it's how it's supposed to be. Right. That's how you're supposed to be. And that Josh Allen, who's supposed to be all great, is just throwing these interceptions and all that stuff and just throwing the football down the field. And No. Mm-hmm. I don't think all that is, is good football, but people think probably think it's so great. So, uh, the the reason why the NFL stinks this year is mostly the coaches. None of the coaches have good game plans, and they just have a good quarterback, and they said, "Fuck, we just gonna drop back and throw it." They disregard the running game like that's not a part of the get of the offense. Right. We we the number one team to do that, but I see around the league other teams doing the same shit. Yep. Well, let's talk about this uh, viral video. I don't want to say viral video of the week because this this uh video, my nephew had gave me this video and like. November or so. We haven't done this in a while, and we had the the Eagles games and and uh, uh, Christmas and New Year's break, so we haven't done this in a while. But I've been holding on to it for a while. Here we go. We have a Karen wants to interrogate a black family because there's too many visitors in their own home. So the 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 lady walks up and questions the black couple. <laughs> About the people that visit in their home. <laughs> Here's the video. My husband and I had an encounter with our first Karen today in our new subdivision. I ain't no daycare center, nothing. A question. Are you automatically is assuming it's a daycare because we're African American or something? Because of what I've seen so many. If you saw a coroner, if you saw, if you saw a coroner, there has been a death in my family. That was Sunday. Seven my niece ago. is okay. dead. So therefore, we have family out of town. We have military people that are in our family. My mother, my father, my sister's father. We are a close-knit like, family. Like, like, that's very so what you will not do is disrespect this house where we pay. You will what you will not do. Well, you can. There, there's, 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 oh, so what? So what? Oh, I've been waiting to run into a Karen. I've been waiting to run into here, the funny thing about uh, black people is they get this thing where you overly describe something to a white person. They they get a good habit of doing that. Can you imagine if that was a black woman asking what was going on over that house? That woman would have slapped the taste out of her mouth. And if that if a man would have would have walked up and said, "Hey, yeah, what's going on over there?" The the dude right there would have punched him right in his face. He would have they would have never said, Oh, it's a definite family, and I have people in the military over and all like, this stuff. Like, man, if you don't get the fuck out of my face, that's exactly what he would have said. Your motherfucking business. That's that's what they would have said if they were black. Uh, that's exactly. But they black people got this thing where you like overly describe what's going on. That's none of her business who you got going on in your house. That ain't her house, so ain't none of your business. Oh, it, they'd have been fighting well, in the why street. she over there talking about what's going on over here. Exactly. They'd have been fighting in the street if they was but, but for some reason, black people got to overly describe what's going on, what's going on in their house. That's none of her business that it was a death in the family. Why, why are you uh, uh, describing it to her for? 
run into one of you. And if they had a damn daycare center in the house, what business is it of theirs? No one's her. license, exactly. Right. She's just being newsy. Mm-hmm. So wait until one of you. Those police, those, 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 so what? Those, 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 okay, don't, don't disrespect her. Don't disrespect her. Yeah, no, no, that's disrespectful. what she wants you to do. It's don't okay. give her what she wants. Yeah, what I, you will not do. Here, I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah, so you can mar go march your ass back, back to your residence. Yo, tell me where you, you go, go back to your residence. Bye. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I got you on camera. Go ahead, Karen. Bye. 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 Call him. Matter of fact, y'all call the police. Call the police, Diddy. Nothing. Are you threatening me? Are you threatening me and my family? Man, we're not your typical black family. We're not your typical African Americans. Now, uh, yeah, exactly. What does we're not your typical African Americans mean? I guess they're better than the typical African Americans. I don't know. Okay. So what about us being black? So what? So what? So what? No, I'm a Jew, man. We're the real Jews. Real Jew. We're the real Jews. Oh, goodness gracious. This is a and, and look how far down the street she lived. Eh? <laughs> exactly. All the way up the block to talk some shit. <laughs> and she wondered what's going on at these people's house. And she way down the, up the street. Right. Now, if you right next door and you got all these people out front and in your yard and stuff, they're not going to understand. Say, hey, what's going on? You know what I mean? Right. You all the way up the street. Mind your business. Don't worry about what's going on up there. <laughs> Harassment. If you think somebody breaking the law, just call the cops. Right. This is harassment. I ain't never see that one. Yeah, that's uh he saw me that a while ago. Um yeah, uh black people, you don't have to dis overly describe what, what you're doing to uh, uh someone that's white because we don't even do that to each other. Mm -hmm. That woman would have slapped the taste. If that was a black woman, say, hey, what's going on over there? Uh, hey, hey, are you running a daycare center? That woman would have slapped the taste out of her mouth. And that dude, if it was another dude said that, he'd have punched him right in his face for 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 not minding his damn business. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. All right. Um, Newport News, Virginia, your favorite place, um, Newport News, Virginia. Uh, Michael Vicks from there. Alan Iverson. Um, I had a buddy named Wayne, Lil Wayne from there, too. Back in oh. Job Corps. Yeah, um, what was the other uh, quarterback that was from the the quarterback played on the Saints that was from uh, Newport News also. He didn't stay in the league for a long time. I forget. That was some that was somebody's cousin, wasn't it? Was it Vic cousin or something? You're talking about the black dude, right? Yeah, yeah. And he was from Newport News also. I think he was somebody's cousin. I feel like it was Vic or somebody like that cousin. Mm-hmm. Well, we got a six-year-old intentionally shoots his teacher, Abigail Zorner. I probably messed up her, her last name, during class. Here's the report. Six-year-old boy detained after police say he shot a teacher inside a Newport News Elementary School. I'm Bill Fitzgerald. I'm Cheryl Miller. We have complete coverage of this developing story for you. We begin with our crime insider, John Burkett, who is in Newport News. John? Well, Cheryl, what was chaotic here about four hours ago is now calm. The chief of police just leaving this area off of Tyner Road at the Rich Creek Elementary School about 2 o'clock this afternoon. What we do know is they were called for an active shooter situation here at the elementary school. It appeared that at that time, a student shot a teacher inside the classroom. The chief of police confirming that late tonight that a six-year-old boy intentionally shot his teacher inside that classroom. She is critically wounded and at a local hospital with life-threatening injuries. Their investigation, of course, is in its early stages. Uh, he briefed us a short time ago telling us that he is uh, thankful for the parents that came here. And I don't get this. Uh, it's definitely more to the story with this one. And uh, they say that the teacher was well liked and this kid like liked the teacher or something. And uh, I guess they had gotten a confrontation or something. And he How do a one year old get into a conversation with anybody? A six year old. I mean, a first, I'm sorry, a first grader. Right. Right. They said, I don't know what he was probably, she probably told him to sit down, uh, do something. And they had gotten a, a argument about it. And I, maybe he liked the teacher so much and the, the, uh, the teacher wasn't giving him any attention or something. I don't know. It just don't sound right to me. She, she got shot, shot up on, right? 
Oh, uh, in the stomach. Mm-hmm. Scene. While it seemed frustrating and chaotic, they did a good job of filing in line and getting their students by grades, picking them up, and then the buses rolled in just about an hour ago and picked up the rest of the students that were left here at the scene. So very chaotic scene, intense scene here this afternoon is now calmed down. Again, the chief of police, Steve Drew, has left this area. He did, did brief our cameras a little while ago. We may have that sound a few minutes from now. We do have the SOT, so let me roll what uh, what uh, the chief of police, Steve Drew, said. The altercation was between a six-year-old, the, the student uh, who did have the firearm, and the teacher, and then a round was fired. Um, like I said, she suffered a, a gunshot wound and has been transported to the hospital. This was not an accidental shooting. You heard it there. It's not an accidental shooting. And that is what's shocking among parents here as you saw them coming to pick up their kids, tears streaming down from their faces. Our Maggie Marshall caught up with some of those parents. She has their information tonight. Hey, John, well, pickup here is complete. And like you said, it has been just so emotional for both these parents, but also these little ones that were here today. I spoke to many parents who say that their mind just immediately went to anxiety and worry, wondering if their students were the ones hurt in this shooting. One parent I spoke to called the entire situation just devastating. She says her anxiety went through the roof the second she heard that there was a shooting. She said she raced to the school as quick as she could and she described that the school was just chaos when she got there because all of the parents were just trying to get their kids and just trying to figure out um, if their kids were safe. She said she had tears in her eyes when she finally got to reunite with her kids. It was really devastating and me not knowing exactly what the situation was. And when he came out of that school, that was the best thing that I could have ever seen. Tonight, these parents tell me they're just going to be loving on their kids extra as they try to make sense of what happened, as they try to cope and just even understand what they went through today here at school. The superintendent of the schools says this school in particular will be closed on Monday. Live in Newport News, I'm Maggie Marshall, CBS 6 News. Thank you, Maggie. And we, of course, will continue to follow this breaking and developing story for you throughout the evening past. Well, I still I don't understand this. That that was a a weird story because um I don't understand why he he shoot he intentionally shot the teacher. Mm-hmm. So it's That's something going me. on here. And like you said, it's a lot missing to the story. Right now, my thing my thing is the mom. First off, the mom should be charged and she should go to jail. Yes, because you bought a gun, but you allow access to your damn six year old to pick up the gun. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that. Does you don't check your kid bag to make sure like you you aren't you putting lunch in this kid bag? Right. So the gun is in the bag and you never even go through his bag to take out, you know, his homework to help him out through, you know, with his homework or put a new lunch bag in there, take the old lunch bag out. None of that went on. Mm-hmm. And then the school, they said the school security guard checked the bag. How you check a bag and don't find a gun? Like how much shit can be in this, uh, a six year old bag that you missed the gun? Right. And then on top of that, was the gun already cocked and loaded, ready to go? Uh, I, yeah, because he couldn't probably do it. That's crazy to me. Unless it was a revolver. Yeah. Well, like Philip said, that uh, the superintendent said that the security guard checked the bag. Here's a report about it. Uh, they're just sitting a- around talking about it. So here's the report. We're going to turn to some serious news right now in Newport News, Virginia, where we are learning more about the six-year-old student who shot his teacher last week. That's right, because officials are now revealing that at least one school administrator knew that the child may have had a weapon on him hours before the shooting. NBC News correspondent Kathy Park is here in studio with us with the very latest. Hi, Kathy. So obviously this revelation seems quite shocking, and we understand that this was actually made, people were made aware during an online meeting with parents. What exactly did the superintendent say? Yeah, so this meeting was for parents only. It was uh, last night. A lot of folks obviously shaken by this incident. So the biggest revelation, as you mentioned, was at least one administrator knew that this child had a weapon. Um, this prompted possible? a search. However, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. However, that search came up empty-handed. Um, but the superintendent is saying, look, because of this incident, a lot of changes are coming. 
from the administrative front, but also with security. And what's interesting is that the superintendent said that they've actually been in touch with Rob Elementary in Uvalde to oh. get some ideas on how to beef up their security system. So first thing uh, they're no, fired, they know, fired a person to check that bag. Yep. That in the, the front of the building, they're going to have to make some changes. So they're going to know who's coming in and out of that building, but also moving forward. They'll be um, installing metal detectors as well, but this is just one of many changes. But here's a little bit more from last night's meeting. Take a listen. We want to make sure we have measures in place that will allow um, our faculty and our students and you, our parents, to feel that your student, the uh, confidence that your student is entering a safe building on a daily basis. So uh, that means metal detectors in elementary school. So obviously this is a majority of black and uh, or Latino school if they want to put metal detectors in the school what was you about to oh okay i thought you were going to say yeah yeah that's the, the first thing they think oh put metal detectors because they always do that in a, a, a black mm -hmm. a, a, a majority black school or latino either or but from the looks of the people outside it looked like it was a majority black school it looked like it was probably mixed and we should also point out that uh, the school is still kind of, um, it's not open, obviously. The, the kids are still traumatized by this, so they're not in class. And it's kind of to be determined when they will actually return to the classroom. There is still a lot we don't know about the child involved because it's a six-year-old child. Right. I mean, do we know anything about where he is now or what kind of consequences he could face? Yeah, so um, the last update that we received is that this child is under a temporary detention order and then received a medical kind of checkup and um that's that's the the, la the latest update but as far as the consequences go i mean the biggest all right but where's like the guy said where's the kid at now is he at home chilling watching tv or what yeah oh that's what you think yeah what, what are they gonna do with him uh, i don't know you can't uh, lock him up and he, that kid needs like supervised you know somebody to be there he's in he's six years old right so, so when they go like, you go ahead I was going to say either that or he's like like one of them little foster detention type centers, but they still need somebody with the kid like 24 mm seven. -hmm. So they probably just like, you know what? Just take them home and don't let them leave the house and shit like that. Right. So when they going to lock the mom up when all this no, stuff they the, should, the, though. or they the parents or or let's just say the parents. Let's be politically correct. <laughs> no, 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 no. Say the mom because the mom, like, <laughs> mom bought the gun and it's registered to her. So she's the, the supposed to be the responsible owner of the gun. Right. And like you said, lunch and uh, you got to help a six year old with their homework. So when did he have find time to put a gun in his book bag? Mm -hmm. I think the most shocking detail is that he's just six years old. Yeah. So as far as the consequences go, legal experts are saying, look, it might be difficult to charge this young boy with the crime, but um, and because under Virginia law, there is a so-called infancy defense. So kids that young can't form criminal intent. So there are, you know, questions about whether perhaps parents could be facing charges. So a lot that we don't know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and of course, we're all thinking about parents, that teacher. Parents, I didn't do my man in the mix. He ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> who was this hero ushering students out of the classroom as this unfolded. NBC News correspondent Kathy Park, thank you so much. Yeah, that's just a, a weird story. Like, what was she had, she had to put lunch in the bag. She had to help the kid with his homework taking stuff out of the bag. How do you not know your gun is missing and is in your bag? And then how superintendent security, whoever he's supposed to be, check the bag and don't see a gun? Like, how much stuff in there in that little kid's bag that you do, you overlook the gun? Right. And does this security guard check every kid's bag? Yeah, so he if, if, that's what he do. He bullshit. He you open it up and then he just peek in there and then keep it moving. But but a gun should have a little heaviness to it. Exactly. And he didn't feel like, well, wow, this is this is a little kind of this bag is a little heavy. Let me check what's in here. Yeah, he's full and of how big? How the, the kid? It's a little six year old kid. His book bag can't be that big. A small book bag. That's what I mean. It's not enough room for a whole bunch of shit. So right. I don't know. It's just crazy to me. And, and what was the what was the six year old intentions? What did what was his intentions to do with this gun? Blast his teacher, obviously. But, but but they said that that uh, she was well liked and that kid liked her. Maybe the kid liked her a little more than the other when she was showing love to another kid that he don't like. I don't know. Like a fatal attraction type of thing. <laughs> I mean, you know how you know how some teachers have their favorite, right? And if he, like you said, if he's not getting that attention and as a kid, another kid in the class is getting more attention, maybe he felt some type of way. I don't know. Yeah, that's a weird story. 
So we go into Detroit, Michigan, where a family chased down and severely beat a man for allegedly raping a teenager. Here's the report. Now the Detroit Police Department is working on a warrant package to send over to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office for review. One neighbor who saw the man being beaten up says he's lucky to be alive. We got a child predator out here. Neighbors and onlookers recorded the bloody aftermath. The man is severely beaten after allegedly sexually assaulting a teenager. Protect your kids, man. Protect your kids. Absolutely tragic. It really is. Um, it, it is affecting a young life and a family. Uh, and it's going to definitely take time to heal. Captain Rebecca McKay of the Detroit Police Department says officers took the suspect into custody Tuesday night. I hope you get everything that you deserve. And although police would not confirm it, neighbors who witnessed the beating and those in the video say the suspect knows the victim. It's sad. And it just of course he did. Oh, cousin or something. Of course he did. That, why would that a man like that would have access to a, to a kid? There was some, or, or he was a family member, or some dude that around the way that everybody knew. They just say teenager. They don't. Yes, say I it. watch a lot, a lot of ID, and a lot of these teenagers, man, they go on these uh, social media sites and stuff, and they meet older guys, and the older guy will pick them up from school, or they'll catch a bus and go to his house, and I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. So, oh, I'm not surprised at that one, what you just said. There's a surprised. lot of that going on too. This hurt me so bad, and it, it broke me down that a man. Would do that. Carmen Witherspoon saw the man beaten up after the alleged assault. She heard the commotion outside of her home in northwest Detroit Tuesday night and opened her front door to see the child rape suspect practically naked, surrounded by the victim's furious relatives. They beat him over there real good. He was on the ground. He managed to get up and he ran across the street. Yeah, that was blood. Mm, he beat that ass, huh? He was on my prop. He fell. He slipped and fell. And that's when they beat him some up. I'd be like, oh, don't do that on my property. <laughs> Drag his ass in the street. <laughs> it was bloody. It was nothing but blood. It was puddle on the ground. From what I heard, they stomped his top lip off. His, his mouth hey. appeared to be very bloody, and it was just like he'd been in the MMA. I ain't never heard nobody say that. Like, Mark. they stomped his top lip off. Our brother here has never met a blunt he didn't didn't pass. <laughs> Look at him. There, there you go, last. The lips. Yep. That great. dude will smoke you under the table. DeAndre, founder of Seven Mile Radio, provided Fox 2 with this video. The victim's relatives reported. He going to say, ha ha, nah, I don't smoke. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about laughing at him. Uh, a serious uh, report like this. <laughs> Aspect after he allegedly raped the teen. They chased him around the neighborhood and dispensed their own form of justice before calling police once they caught up with him. I'm not mad at the way that it happened. Uh, whether it be swift street justice or, you know, through the court systems and the jail systems, I think that uh, we need to uh, raise awareness about this type of situation because too often they get swept under the rug. We have a lot of victims, uh, both women, uh, girls and boys. Sexual assault is a real thing. Um, it occurs um, at all ages. Um, I would just ask that parents, teachers, advisors, administrators, friends, family, just always keep your eyes open. Listen. If you see something, say something. Um, obviously report any suspected abuse uh, to um, the Detroit Police Department. And this suspect is no stranger to Detroit Police. There was a warrant out for his arrest for a non-fatal shooting over on the city's east side. As for this rape allegation, investigators are hoping a charging decision is made in the next few days. I'm Randy Wembley, and this is the edge so they ain't even charge him for the for the rape yet so like you said it might be a little bit more more to mm -hmm. uh to the story well as the reporter just said that the guy should have been in damn jail he should have never been out on the street because uh because <laughs> of this warrant that he had the warrant was like in november so he should have been uh tracked down and been arrested in november You'd be surprised how many people run in the streets with warrants that should have been in jail, but ain't, and then they get still free to do other shit. I'm all for street justice if you got the right person. Right. So uh, here's the report on it.
Fox News' Dave Kinchin is live for us tonight. And Dave, there was a warrant for his arrest before this alleged assault happened. Yeah, that's really one of the big, big questions tonight. I spoke off camera with the suspect's ex-girlfriend. She said that uh, she hasn't been in contact with him or with him in three years, but he still, she says, uses her address as his. She says that she's been asking him to change it, and she, like many others, just totally shocked by all the allegations. I don't believe that. I so, don't uh, so you, you can but you write return to sender, and they'll stop sending that shit with his right. name on it. But you still talking to the guy. You're still mm -hmm. talking to the guy about changing your address, but yet uh, he never did it. No, they're still doing something with each other. Mm -hmm. But and since he, he since he's known as a rapist and all that, so like the heat is on her. So she like, hey, look, I don't talk to the guy. I don't know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. but, but you're telling him to change the address, change change the address. So you're still talking to him. Mm -hmm. So no, she's full of shit. And charges. Tonight, 37. And then I'm looking at him with uh, this picture here, and I'm like, well, damn, he don't, he don't look that bad as they talking about his top lip was off his mouth and his eyeball was hanging out. And I mean, he got a little, little, uh, uh, mouses under his, his eye, but I yeah, mean, I he he a lot worse than that. He's only 37. Is that what I just yeah, said? Yeah, yes, Dang. he's only 37. Yep. That, that, that Detroit, man, it seemed like everybody's hard in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, shit, he don't look. I'm thinking I'm going to see somebody with no lip, no lip and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And hey, he don't look that bad. And then all that ass whooping in that pool of blood and his lips, his lips ain't even puffy. Mm. Your old Kahari Wright is booked on charges of first degree criminal sexual conduct of a minor home invasion and a non-fatal shooting. He's sporting some of the same bruises Detroit police say he got in this right. beatdown captured on cell phone video. You got a child predator out right here. Great. Investigators confirmed this is right, beaten and bloodied after allegedly raping a teenage girl on Detroit's west side. Police say 12th Precinct detectives are investigating the assault on Wright allegedly carried out by the victim's family. I hope you get everything that you deserve. From what I heard, they stomped this top lip off. And, you know, he well, obviously that's not stop laughing at the guy because you laughing at because, you know, that that dude was smoked this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Blunts, Newports, that's his thing. <laughs> oh. Well, obviously, his top lip wasn't 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 a beat off, as as he said, uh, stomped, because, out. Uh, uh, stomped out. Yeah, because he has all his lips. <laughs> He had his, you know, his eye hanging out and all of that type of stuff. So basically, street justice was served real swift. Uh, he was high. He thought it was worse than what it was. <laughs> he talking about his eye hanging out. We ain't see. We caught black eye, a little swole, but it wasn't hanging out or nothing. <laughs> Seven Mile Radio gave Fox to this video of the attack. His, his mouth appeared to be very bloody, and it was just like he'd been in an MMA fight almost. But Fox 2 <laughs> did some digging and found that Wright had an arrest warrant against him way back in mid-November. So why was he on the streets to begin with? Court records show charges of home invasion, assault with intent to murder, assault with intent to do great bodily yeah, harm, less than murder. Yep, look at all them damn charges. And, and they left him on the streets to keep doing this shit. That's what that's yep. about. They, they knew they should have had his ass well, locked well, up. He said November, but the charges was in October. He got October, he got October and they filed it in November. So that shit was in October. Mm -hmm. And weapons charges all from October 29th of last year. Sources say that mid-November arrest warrant could have kept right behind bars had he been cuffed and lodged. We asked prosecutors what the heck happened. They told us, quote, you would need to ask Detroit police why he wasn't picked up after the warrant was signed by... Well, my thing is he got the charges for... Uh he was fired his gun or did he shoot somebody? He fired a gun at somebody. He didn't oh, hit him. Okay, so my thing is why wasn't he in jail when they pressed those charges? You know what? It's like it's probably a hidden agenda where they allow a lot of these fucking scumbags to just walk the streets to do shit like this. Because mm -hmm. just looking at that, ain't no way he should have been walking the streets. You know what I mean? Right, right. Because they talking about the warrant was filed in November. But when they arrested him and charged him in October, why wasn't he in jail then? Mm -hmm. Did he so get... Let, so you got all this shit on him and you just say, hey, you, all right, see you later. Right. And, and they right out the front door to do more shit. Right. They ain't say anything about bail. Yeah, because there was no bail. They let him go.
WCPO, the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. So he did ask Detroit police. A spokesperson says they are checking with the folks who handle patrols to see what went wrong and why Wright wasn't Everybody captured. Passing the blame. Sexual assault. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Assault is a real thing. Perhaps long before that horrific alleged child rape could ever take place. I would just ask that parents, teachers, advisors, administrators, friends, family, <laughs> Just always keep your eyes open. Listen. If you see something, say something. Um, obviously, report any suspected abuse. And they still ain't say the girl's the age. No. You know what I think? I think he got caught in the act, and that's why he had only just boxers. Right. Somebody came home, was like, oh, shit. And he's, oh, and he grabbed his boxers and ran out the front door, and she made a fuss and yelling and, and stuff. And then everybody else came out, and they chased his ass and whooped him up down the street. Right. Police administration says they still have to get in contact with other folks in the department related to patrols to get us some of the information we're looking for. So we're hoping to connect with them tomorrow and get more information. See, they're trying, all to, this. They're trying to blame the patrolman. It's not the patrolman. It, it's, it's higher than that. Once he got locked up, it's out of their hands. They got him off the streets. You charged him. Y'all right. supposed to keep him. Now right. they're trying to pass it to the patrolman. It ain't their fault. Right. The patrolman's job is to arrest somebody. And right. that's what they did. Like you yeah. said. They're just trying to blame somebody else. Mm -hmm. I've outside Detroit Police Headquarters, Dave Kinchin, Fox 2 News. Yeah, Dave, I know you did that digging today, and we saw that rap sheet with a little bit of, uh, uh, of a window of what happened beforehand. You spoke with uh, his friend, his ex, no clue at all about any of that, including the home invasions. Well, she certainly had an idea about the rape charges, but uh, we did talk more about some of the things with her, and she just shook her head, total shock. Oh, she's full of shit. Full of shit. So that's your boyfriend, and you didn't know that he was doing home invasions? Mm -hmm. uh, he got uh, a that, fucking long rap sheet. It just happened. Right. So so uh, uh, do you think a person that works a nine-to-five and, and they, they get up early in the morning and come home uh, uh, five, six, seven o'clock, do you think they'll be doing home invasions? <laughs> Hell no. Okay, so he he so in other words, he don't work. That's what you're saying? No, he ain't got no job. All right, so now she didn't know that he was where he get money from the and <laughs> from her. And I bet you and I bet you she probably got a good job and he was shacking up with her and running <laughs> the streets when she go to work. <laughs> so why he's still using my address, but he don't live here. Sure he don't. Right. No, they still uh was doing stuff to with each other about all of that and again she said that they haven't been together in three years but she's been asking him bullshit mm -hmm. so you've been asking for three years to change it change his address like she's you lying. said like you said if she can either write return a uh, sender or or she could have went down to city hall or somewhere and asked somebody how can i remove somebody off my address because he doesn't live here mm -hmm. she had plenty of time she had three years to get that shit together she's, she's full lying. of shit yeah, she's full of shit. Him to change the address and not use her address. And so with all of this coming down, certainly uh, she seems to really want to be able to move on with uh, her life uh, for sure in every way possible. That was the vibe that we uh, definitely got tonight. And for the victim's family, they don't want to move on until they find out exactly why it is taking this long to figure out why he wasn't behind bars or perhaps uh, they knew about this before. So we'll be waiting for that answer as time marches on. Dave Kinchin for us live. Thank you. Yeah, she's uh, she's lying. She's absolutely lying. It's like the heat is on her, and she like, well, uh, uh, don't put that shit on me. That right. was him. Yeah. Yeah, that that's uh. He probably was breaking in the crib, still, and she and she was getting a cut. Yeah. And asking and asking no questions. Or or he like breaking in and like getting TVs and all that shit, and she got all his stolen equipment, <laughs> his stolen stuff she's uh -huh. been using and shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we go to Oklahoma City. <laughs> Police is looking for a suspect who walked out of a business with twenty-one thousand dollars after turn, turning in fake jewelry. Uh, this is one of our street entrepreneurs, can you say? Because he just got twenty-one thousand dollars real quick. Oh, he wanted the best. I had to give it to him. <laughs> Here's the report. Caught on camera, the new twist to the old bait and switch scam has left one local business out tens of thousands of dollars. Wait until you see how this happened. News Force Taylor Mitchell has the story and the video that might help track down the suspect. 
The man walked up to this window with one bag of counterfeit jewelry and another with four. Okay, Taylor Mitchell is kind of like odd shaped because her her uh, it looks like she may have like lost weight. Because mm -hmm. as I'm, you see how her like her head doesn't match her body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here gold gold. Basket too. <laughs> jewelry. They looked identical, but at one point he was able to make the switch. When I dumped out the bag, I knew immediately She's it was the same stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that jewelry, totally worthless. Taylor Beard, a diamond buyer at Dakota Financial Precious Metals, originally confirmed the bag of 14 karat gold jewelry was real and offered $20,000. He fills out the receipt and tells me that he thought I said 28000 I told him, no, sir, I did not. Um, so he gives our money back and we you know give what? him the I'm cool. I'm cool. You're trying to burn me. I'm out. <laughs> right. And he then says, well, will you do 21, which was more reasonable? And I told him, yes, we could do that. Um, and that's when he hands us back the fraudulent bag of jewelry. <laughs> it's Slick oldest, Willie. It's your oldest trick in the book. <laughs> yep. And she <laughs> fell for the okie doke. Yep. He switched out and walked out the door with our $21,000 cash. This police report reveals the... First of all, she should have... Uh, uh, she should have... When she... He, she he, when she gave him the bag back and they did that, oh, would you do 21? Yeah, all right. And when she he gave her, her the bag back again, she should have checked it all over again. I would have checked every piece. Where is this guy getting $20,000 $20, worth of jewelry? Right. I'm checking every piece of this jewelry. Exactly. And I don't care if I checked it the first time. Before you get this cash, I'm going to check it again just to make sure. Right, because this is a whole new deal. Yeah. This is a whole new deal. Now you reneged on the first deal. This is a whole new deal. So I'd have just started everything back over again. And and, and it didn't stay in your your line sight of vision. Right. So he tucked it and, and put it in his pocket. You don't know what's going on down there. She it, she's an idiot. Exactly. The suspect allegedly didn't have any ID on him, so the business had him write down. Wait a minute. Damn, he ain't even got no ID. Right. Oh, so how are you goodness. giving somebody a check and he doesn't have no damn ID? Because she's doing some slick shit and she probably thought it was slowed and stolen and still took it. You ain't supposed to be taking no shit with no ID. Right. Because now if it comes up, okay, let's just say it get popped for uh, stolen uh, goods. Now you can't say, well, who you going to say did it? Because yeah. the guy don't have an ID. He probably signed Joe Blow on that little receipt thing. They ain't who he is. He got right. his bread. He done. Exactly. His personal info, which was false information. Oh, oh shocking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just important to prevent becoming a victim in this type of a crime. Take your time. Make sure everything is correct. Well, the deal should have never even went down the first time because uh, you don't have no ID. Like, no, sir, I can't help you. You exactly. got to bring an ID. And what old man like that walks around with no damn ID? He up to some no good. You ain't got nothing, but you got $20,000 worth of jewelry in your pocket. Get the hell out of here. Right. And we take that out of good faith that they're putting the correct information okay. on her. Okay. All right. Could it be because it's Oklahoma? I don't know. She's an idiot. <laughs> That's what it is. Receipt. <laughs> I didn't even know he had no ID. Thankful. After 19 years of the business, she still has her job. I was devastated. You know, um, being here as long as I have, that somebody would do that to me. The business bought ink pads and will require customers to take their thumbprint if they do yeah, not have an ID. She worked there for 19 years. She looked like she bought 25. Yep. In Oklahoma City, Taylor Mitchell, Oklahoma's News 4. All right, Taylor, thank Good you. Job, now, Pops. besides that, it's up his very clear. <laughs> <laughs> Your video and picture of him. The only other clue to the suspect's identity is he was seen leaving in a newer model sports type SUV. If you know who this man might be, call Ooh. Oklahoma City Going Crime Stoppers for a store. chance at a cash reward. So, okay, so he has no ID. He's driving around in a car. But so I, obviously he don't have a driver's license on him. How would you allow all this stuff to go on? I'm talking about the Miss Beard. Why, how, why would Miss Beard do this deal with him? Because mm, she's stupid and she was probably trying to burn him. It's probably worth more than what she gave him. Right. So and he said 21. Oh, hell yeah, 21. All right. But she didn't know she, he was pulling the fast one. She tried to pull the fast one. Right.
Right. It kind of sounds like this is a place we go to if uh, you trying to uh, trying to get rid of some uh, stolen, some stolen shit. shit. Uh, right. Because the word they call that when you got stolen shit, you trying to is a word for that. What they call that? I don't know. Uh, it's a word. It's on what they call that? Not fleece. What is it called? It's like a word that they call when you got some stolen shit. You just trying to off real quick. Mm-hmm. Dad, yeah, that's the place you go to. Yep. Cause no it, ID needed. Right. You, you don't have no ID, and I'm, I'm giving you 21 grand, and you don't have no damn ID on you. And like he gonna actually really write his real name on that, <laughs> on that receipt. <laughs> Who just giving out cash like that? She should have gave him a check. Exactly. First of all, she shouldn't gave him shit. But if you mm-hmm. talk about big money like that, then you can give a check. So when you realize you just got duped, you can still stop that check before he even spend that shit. Right. And when he go to cash that shit, the cops will be waiting for his ass. Right. That's ridiculous, Dave. That's what she get. <laughs> Well, as we mentioned about football, uh, we have yesterday the San Francisco 49ers beat the Seattle Seahawks 41 and 21. I was so rooting for the Seahawks to win. And then Geno Smith started fucking up. And I said, God damn it. <laughs> well, Buffalo fighting for their life today. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that one. Uh, well, the question for you is Gino, for Geno Smith. Michael Rappaport said that, uh, uh, not Michael Rappaport, what's the NFL dude's name? His, his last name is Rappaport, but I don't remember his first name. He Ian. said, okay, Ian Rappaport said that the Seahawks is going to use the franchise tag on Geno Smith. If they can't come with a long-term deal before March, he'll get $30 million uh, uh, the upcoming season. So what are your thoughts on the Seahawks and when Geno Smith? I mean, Geno Smith, been he been in the league since he, he, he started out at 23. And he played all 16 games. And now he's, I think, 32 or 33. 32. And this is the only other time he played a full season. So all in between, he's always hurt. Mm-hmm. Not, no, no good numbers or nothing. He put up some real good numbers. Had a 100 uh, rating this year. So that's, like, excellent. So he had a real good year. I think 30 touchdowns and, like, 11 picks. Mm-hmm. And nobody expected Seattle to win or make the playoffs. So he did good on that front. But as a, you got to make sure that this ain't no – one off out the blue lucky season for him. So before you want to really pay him, I mean, all starting quarterbacks get paid, so he got to get something. Right. But before you lock him in for a long term, because what's a long long term for somebody that's over 30? Four years, five years? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't see nothing wrong with the franchise tag, but that's a lot of bread for one year. But this mm-hmm. is like the year where it's like, okay, let's make sure that wasn't a fluke year shows what you got. But he's already on a, you know, the older type, like, I mean, he still got, as a quarterback, he can still play to at least, like, i say 34, 35, something like that. Right. So, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a tricky situation. If you believe he's your guy, then roll with him. If you're not, I mean, because if you if you cut him, then what? You're in the draft and you're having a shitty season? Starting all over again. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to do that either. Right. If I, I don't see nothing wrong with the franchise tag. That's a lot of bread, but it is what it is. Yeah, but and like you said, that's the that's damn near the standard because people threw out uh, Tannehill because I think Tannehill is making like 30, 30, 35, I think. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to say, well, if he's uh, getting a deal like that, then Geno Smith should also get the same deal. You that's you can't compare uh, Tannehill to Geno. Mm-hmm. Tannehill actually been playing. He and got Tannehill, hurt. Tannehill been playing. He played a lot of years, like almost the four seasons, and he's been on a consistent basis. This right. is Geno's first good year since his rookie year, and his rookie year wasn't good, but at least he played all the games. Right. And soon as shitty Tannehill got hurt, the uh, the, I don't even think the Titans ever won a game after that. So, I mean, he's so shitty, and he's like the, one, the worst one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. They could they didn't, couldn't even win a game mm-hmm. after when he got hurt. I think they if they won a game, it might have been one. And they was destined to go to the playoffs. And here we go. We got the Jacksonville Jaguars damn near took their spot. So here's something for you. I, I thought about you, too, yesterday watching this because um, Jacksonville Jaguars is, first of all, the, the Chargers is 10 and 7, and the, the Jaguars is 9 and 8. The Chargers had to go to Jacksonville. <laughs> yeah, it's dumb shit. <laughs> they had to go to Jacksonville to play a team that they have a better record than just, just because that team was first in their division. <laughs> Yeah, they they have to uh, work this a little bit better because <laughs> this sister right here ain't cutting it. 
<laughs> so, like I said, the Jacksonville Jaguars beat the Chargers 31 to 30. A shitty football. Here we go. We have the Jacksonville turned the ball over four times in the first qu- first half and still won the football game. And like you said, the Chargers was throwing the football down the field like they was behind. It's the same e- shit that the Eagles do. Mm-hmm. My brother just texted me eight minutes ago. I'm going to tell you what he said. He said, this Bills team remind me of the Chargers. You got the lead, but yet and still, you still throwing the ball every damn play. True. Same True. shit we always talk about. Well, shit, they they did that in the first first half. Don't know if, that's just the reason why they caught up. That's just the reason why Miami had caught up. Mm-hmm. Now, on the Chargers side, I already think I know what you're going to say. Uh, Coach Brandon Staley, is he fired? Yes. <laughs> should, should he just go there and just pack his shit? Don't I think because 10-7, they're better than 10-7 with the talent that they have. Right. You got the, the 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 top sacking dude on your team. You got a young quarterback that can easily throw for 4,000, 5,000 yards. You got good receivers. You got solid running game. Why is your team struggling so bad like that to put points on the board? That's your coach. Well, and then the thing, uh, last week, uh, Mike Williams got hurt, and he shouldn't even really even been playing anyway. And when you play somebody like that that's still hurt, you can't make him a focal point. You can use him as a decoy, and if he open, throw it to him, but don't focus on him as your number one read, even though he's your number one receiver. Right. Mm-hmm. So the coach is, is all on the coach. Right. It was, it was what, what did I say? Uh, it was like 27 to 3 or 27 to 7. And they were still throwing the ball. And then at the end, it was uh, 30 to 20. And they were still throwing the ball with five minutes to go. You run mm. that clock out. They said, yep. they said, they said, uh, the team, the charges didn't make them burn none of their timeouts. How do you do that? Mm-hmm. You, make them, you make them burn every one of them timeouts to make it hard as hell for them to come back. Yeah. Coach. Mm-hmm. Is always thinking they smarter than the way the, the, uh, the script says what you're supposed to do. Yep. And like Philip said, uh, Buffalo and the Miami, Buffalo was winning 27 to 24. It's in the third quarter. Um, I don't think Buffalo is going to win this game. Wasn't it like 17 to 3 at one point? Yes. It was 17 to 3 at, uh, it was 17 to 3. First quarter or something? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Tonight we have the Giants and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, what's your thoughts on that game? I think. I think the uh, Giants is better coached, but I think Minnesota got more talent. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Minnesota. Close, because their coach is still stupid and their quarterback is suspect. (laughs) He can put up big numbers and then turn around and play like a damn fourth stringer the next game. He's always up and down roller coasters throughout his career. Mm Mm-hmm. And t- tonight at 8 o'clock, we have the Ravens versus the Cincinnati Bengals. What's your thoughts on that game? Oh, I should say, I should use the odds. I'm sorry. The Bengals are eight-point favorites, and the over-under is 40. Uh-huh. I think it should be an easy game for the Bengals because uh, Baltimore is all banged up. And then they're playing with, what, a third and a four-string quarterback? Yes. So, yeah, they're all fucked up. They already don't got no running game because they never established a run. Just because you got a running quarterback doesn't mean you can't establish a running game. And they got rid of the, the good running backs that they had. The other ones got broke, and now you got no running back. Mm-hmm. And you got young boys, but you never established them as a running back, so now you can't use them in the playoffs. So they fucked up. Right. And tomorrow, Monday night, we have the Cowboys versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Cowboys are 2.5 point favorites, and the over and under is 45.5. What's your thoughts on that game? Cowboys, Buccaneers, I think the Cowboys will win because they got more talent. And both, both, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Tampa Bay is older. They got like good players, but a lot of their players are older. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So uh, I want Tampa Bay to win. I think they do got a chance because Dak, what are you on an eight game streak or throwing a fucking interception? Yeah. And crucial moments, especially pick six. What he got out of those interceptions? Four of them is uh, pick sixes. Mm-hmm. So so I'm gonna say Tampa Bay with a close win, but I think the, uh, the Cowboys will win. And Tampa Bay, by the way, is has an eight and nine record. They was first in their division and in the playoffs. Ain't that great? <laughs> <laughs> all right 
All right, and some TV movie talk. Married at First Sight. Married at First Sight started is in uh, Tennessee. I want to say Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, what's your thoughts on it so far? And one thing I gotta say is um, they gotta start start um, start editing this better because the the wedding stuff is drawn out way too long. Yeah, see, I and I don't like it. I, don't, I only start liking the show after they get married because that's when the shit gets real. All this lovey dovey fairy tale, put the makeup on, get all ready, whatever. I can do without all that shit. Mm -hmm. And then they added in the bachelor party before they didn't used to have all this stuff like that. It just, like you said, it's dragged out. Now you watch one episode and it's about one couple getting married per episode or something. But before right. they would show multiple couples getting married at one time. Exactly. And uh, we'll talk more about it once they uh, see. I like when they go on a honeymoon and all that stuff. Well, that's what I mean. Shit. After the wedding, yeah, yeah, that's just started, yeah, just wedding shit is too much. Is. And, uh, and then the family grilling them and stuff, and just right, they haven't even gotten to that shit yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about the first couple of the girl because she kept saying she. I don't know why the experts do that. If she tells you she don't want a bald headed dude, don't give her a bald headed dude. They do that shit all the time. Mm hmm. And, and well, she kind of threw me off saying that uh, it's hard for her to find black men attractive, mm -hmm. and she's black. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, no, now let a guy say something like that. You, exactly. You never hear the end of it. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't mess with black women like that. Shit, they would have <laughs> they would have burned him at the stake. Yeah. And they they just went by that when she said she don't find black men uh uh all that attractive. I, it's it hard to find a black man attractive. That's yeah, what she see, said. That, that's crazy. And they can get away with saying stuff like that. Right. I thought it was crazy when she was sitting with her girlfriends and they were talking about, give us the sign if you ain't feeling them and all this. Like, why y'all even thinking about that? And she talking about, yeah, you going to know the sign. And then uh, the guy said, well, you can kiss the bride. And she dips him. And they like, oh, shit, here we go. Yeah. Uh-huh. So while we're talking about this, Philip just sends me a text about Darius Slay. He pretty much said the same shit we've been saying every week <laughs> about Miles Sanders. Yeah. Uh, someone, uh, uh, Brandon. Well, it, James, start, it started off with my with a uh, Darius Slate tweet, and then other, and then other people started commenting underneath it. But when I sent it to you, I think I sent it in the wrong order. Uh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, for some reason, it does that when I send multiple texts. It don't send the first one first. It always send like the second one first, and then it's the first one. So Darius Slate posted it first out the blue, and then that's yeah. when other people started commenting underneath it. Yeah. So again, Miles Sanders uh, stats, he has 259 attempts, 1,269 yards, 4.9 yards of carry. And I thought it was five. Maybe last week they may have changed it because last time I checked on pro football yeah, uh, reference, yeah. it was five. But because he, they, they, they didn't give him a lot of carries, but the little bit of carries, he, I think he was averaging like three. So they've dropped off his uh, yearly total. Oh, OK. All right. So, yes, and the, uh, our peoples that was uh, tweeting under uh, Darius Lay said the same shit that we've been saying for, for damn near the whole season. That uh, uh, well, 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 tell them what Darius Slay said. Darius Slay says, um, what's easy? Okay, let me let me start back with the Brandon Dang. Brandon Dang brought up uh, the, the stats that I just mentioned. And Darius Slay said, uh, what is crazy? Bro could have ran away more for way more easily. What we just the same shit that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And we have the people underneath him was saying that uh one guy said easily they be playing him with the carries a lot of times. Then a lot of his touchdowns get taken by Hertz or Gainwell. I don't care about the goal line stuff. I don't care about the goal line stuff. But I see his point though. I think now now we, we brought that up a little bit because whenever we get in the red zone, they take him out. And I gotta understand, like, okay, I can understand you using fresh, but every once in a while, when he fucking playing real good, let him get a touchdown. Right. And and your boy Trey said, yeah, because they know it's his last year on a contract. If they let him go crazy, he's going to want to get paid. <laughs> yeah, exactly what I said, ain't it? Uh -huh. I said the same thing. I said, the way he runs so easy, he could easily be one of the top running backs with touchdowns, yards, and average. But you don't want to do that because he's on his last leg, and then you're going to have to pay him like he's one of the top running backs. Right. So our our boy here, shout out to our other boy here, Shea Snack Shop, who said the same shit that we said. Imagine if the coaches just ran the ball against the Saints instead of having Minshew throw 800 passes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's funny when Darius Slay is a is an eagle, a teammate, 
and under the same coach, and he mentioning shit like that. So if he mentioned that, that means the whole team know, like, what the fuck is this coach doing? Yep. But I guess and, ain't nobody saying nothing. And, see, Miles can't really say nothing because he's on his last year of the contract, so he want to be, you know, play that good employee because he wants some money. Well, now, if he, well they said Miles said something to him one time, and next thing you know, he was in the doghouse for like a week or whatever. I don't know the whole exchange, but I'm pretty sure he was like, yo, can I get more carries? Or, yo, y'all forgetting about me, and then the coach got pissed off or whatever. Right, because then he'd be labeled as a tr- troublemaker and a bad yeah. teammate and all that shit. So he he probably like, look, let me keep my mouth shut so I can get me so I can get some money. So I would uh, I would hate for us to lose him and then he'd be turning around and be one of the top Russian running backs in football. I think they'll sign him. I don't think he's going to uh, go to a new team. I think they'll pretty much sign him because the salary cap is more this year than next coming season, if I'm not mistaken. So we can't say it's uh, they don't have any money or anything well, you like still that. Got, you you, you bring in Brandon Graham and uh, Fletcher Cox back because you still got a lot of people you need to pay. Yeah, but you're not giving them uh, uh, the the best uh, uh, right. defensive right. lineman. You're not paying them much. But oh, yeah. I, but if you ask me a question where I bring them back. Absolutely. I don't mm-hmm. give a shit about the age, the age shit. I, all I care about is them producing. And right. I don't like how they just throw you to a side just because you're 33, 34. If Brandon Graham is still getting sacks and all that, uh, double double digit sacks, right? Mm-hmm. Double digit sacks. Why not sign him? But Actually, no one had his best year on sacks. I think he had either 10 or 11, but that's the most for his career in one season. Yeah, so so why not bring him back? But knowing the Eagles, they probably yep. won't. Uh, same thing with Fletcher Cox, too. They probably uh they probably won't. Man, but if I, it ain't broke, you don't don't try to fix it and, and and take away from what you got going on. We about to break the we was about to break the sack record. We got the most sacks in in the Eagles history or some shit like that. So keep those guys together. You got something that worked there. Tighten mm-hmm. up everywhere else, but keep those guys there. You start messing with those pieces, and then you're not going to have that same pressure, them same sacks. And that's just like the other boy we was talking about, uh, Hassan Reddick, how he mm-hmm. finished the year with 16 sacks, but how many times he dropped in coverage? Shit, uh. Or, or or just was on the bench on a play because they showed uh what's the name got a hundred more snaps than him. Uh what's the dude uh Micah was it was his name? The, the cowboy. Uh oh goodness gracious. Michael Parsons. Yeah. He got a hundred more snaps. Now, how you got a hundred more snaps when I'm one of the best linebackers and I ain't been hurt all year? That tells you right there, they 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 take him out of the game or they dropping them in coverage. Mm, well, yep. shit, it's not even dropping coverage because in dropping in coverage means you were still there for the snap. So if you're 100 snaps short, that means they sitting you on the bench on a lot of plays. Yep. I remember it was games where we was watching, and I'm texting you, like, where's Reddick at? Why he on the bench? Like, fussing at you and, you and going back and forth like he ain't even in the game right now. So that's mm-hmm. the coach's team. If he ain't hurt, he can play every down, you let him play every down. And don't drop him in the coverage. You find somebody else, you send him after the quarterback. That's what he do best. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, now going back to TV. Uh, did you watch the BMF yet? Yes. Did you watch the the second episode? Uh, yes. Okay. See, it's the thing that we, that that I was we was talking about before. Now, imagine if if it was a high school, uh, because because uh, Terry and Meech is still high school age kids. They're playing high school age kids. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine if let's let's make a role reverse and though they were girls. And there's a, a man on the show that's in their forties that's, that's talking to him. Mm-hmm. How would you how would you think that would work out? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> so you got Lala is forty something years old, and they're like, and and uh, Terry is pointing after her like she's the best thing walking. And his girlfriend is much well, the baby mom. His baby mom is much better looking than Lala than me. Mm-hmm. I agree. And he's like, oh, man, look at that. And then, like you say, the, the ass don't even look right. It's like her body's, like, not proportioned right. She looks weird to me. She, like, almost got that Muppet thing going on in the face. Yeah. Why is she, like, the most sort after, got to be the girlfriend, the, 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 the chick everybody want in all these TV shows? Right. I said, and, that and, and I said now, this is, the third, this is the third black uh, show that we like that she's got to be part of now. Right, and she's fucking forty years old. What what show that that that, that a, a white show or any other race show will have these will have young men running after some forty year old woman? It well, don't shit. exist. Remember on the shy, my man was all after her and stuff too. It's like really, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so far so good on the episodes. Uh, what are your thoughts on those? 
No, they they pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit of stupid shit. You know what I mean? Like how my man just choked the guard out and got out of jail. Like just some superhero shit. All right, right. And, well, and I thought that was stupid too. That how Meek went down south to uh, make a deal, and then it was gonna burn him. But then he pops up. Like he don't have no no team, no army with him. This other guy got a whole army with him. But you gonna let him do what he want and walk the streets like that? I thought that was kind of corny. That shit wouldn't happen. They would have just killed him and took his shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, any other TV shows you've been looking at? Um, I did watch, and it was actually good. Somebody uh, told me they was... What did I see? I saw it on a podcast. Somebody I watched on um, one of these podcasts, and he said he was all into it. It's called... Uh, um, what's the name? Damn, I can't think of it now. It just slipped my mind. Uh, what's the name of that group that... Uh, Innocence Project is a, a documentary, but it's called The Innocent Files. Oh, is that the one they that's uh, Malcolm Jamal Warner is on it? No, nah, no, nah, this is a, I know what you're talking about. No, nah, that's not that. This is a, a documentary, like showing oh, okay, oh, all cases right, and stuff. Uh huh. And it was good because I only saw the first two episodes, and it was about the same uh, story. Mm-hmm. And it was like down south, a three year old girl gets, goes missing, and they find they find her body. She was raped, bitten, and thrown in the river. Mm-hmm. So they locked this guy up that's like the mom's old boyfriend. And then this supposed little uh, teeth expert, dentist type guy. He's like a renowned guy, been all over the world writing books. He said, well, look, I'm going to show you how the mold of his teeth match the bite marks. So they lock him up. He get a uh, life. And then uh, two months later, another girl go missing. And they're like, well, it can't be him. He's like, yeah, it could be him. This is just a copycat. So he get the mold of this guy. This guy, uh, teeth match, so he gets the death penalty. Mm-hmm. And the kicker is, the guy was with his girlfriend at the house where the baby was at. The whole night he was there with his girlfriend in the bed, and the kid go missing. But they lock him up for it. And the guy told me, "Yeah, was well, teeth match on the bite marks?" I'm and I'm thinking, like, how the hell they do this? And you know how down south, I, I guess me and she was talking about this. Like a lot of those older people like that, they never finished school, so they not really the, the you know the brightest. Right. So it's easy, it's easy to frame them with stuff. Mm-hmm. So my man was in the house the whole time with the little girl and her mom. So how's he charged with taking her, raping her, and doing all this? Right. So then they talked to another expert down south. I guess the Innocent Project must have like started getting involved. They was only working on one case, but then they found out like other people saying, Well, this other guy got locked up too. He was the nicest guy in the neighborhood. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have done this and that, you know what I mean? So then they look in there, so they called him up, like, yo, can we uh, you know, pick up your case or whatever? They like, hell yeah. The one expert down south, he said, the guy don't know what he's doing. The, 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 the dentist guy kept saying, the guy down, the guy in Florida, he's like the best. He was like, yeah, that was my idol. Well, it turns out that your idol said, you don't know what you're doing. He said, these are, these, these, I do bite marks all the time, but what he do, he do like a fingerprint. He don't do no, no mold or nothing like that. He take like a, a sheet and he lay it over the bite mark and then he pull it up and then the sheet has the printed of the teeth. And that's mm-hmm. how he do it. Well, lo and behold, Neither one of those guys did the crime. Neither one of those, neither one of those bodies uh, was bitten up, but the body got thrown in the water. And the guy was saying that the uh, the guy from Florida, he was saying like these are not bite marks. You know what I mean? Well, here the bodies got thrown in the water, and when they bodies in the water, all these crawfish come up and start picking at the body. That's how I had those bites like that. Right. And the, uh, the first guy was like, "Well, I didn't say, I didn't say he uh, he, he 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 killed her." But he definitely was involved. Like, damn, after that, my man did 14 years. The other dude did nine years, and they got off. Like, they had DNA. The DNA didn't match even one of these guys. Here, they picked up the right guy the first time, and he was out. He had, like, a history of breaking into people's houses, doing all types of crazy shit, you know what I mean, assaulting people. They picked him up, questioned him, and wound up letting him go. And then they focused on the wrong guy. So they're saying, like, if you would have locked him up in the first time, the second girl wouldn't have got uh, snatched up. Mm-hmm. It was real good. They had this guy that was like uh, some old, like, what'd you call it? Uh, what's the dude name? Uh, like, Howdy Doody, Would You Be My Neighbor, or one of them type of TV shows where the guy talked to the kids. Yeah. He was one of those guys, but on a, he, he did that show, but he was also like a private eye investigator or whatever, deputy or something. Mm-hmm. So he's the one that did the interview with, with the little girl because the one little girl that went missing, her older sister, who was five, said, I saw the man come in here and take my, my sister. And I don't understand that because the uh, the mom, she put the, the, the her three kids in her bed and then she went to the club. 
and she was at the club all night. She said her brother was on the couch at the house and her mom was at the house. And then in the morning, her mom was like, where blankety blank? And she's like, I thought she was with you. No, she ain't here. And that's how they knew like she was missing. Like, well, damn, you went to the club and you never checked on your kids and the mom never checked on the kid and say, well, where's such and such shit? You know what I mean? And the guy that used to be her boyfriend, he worked at the club. So he, she always went to the club because he would let her in free. Right. So he was, and everybody say, well, he was at the club all night. So they said, well, the, the kid could have been missing anywhere from eight o'clock at night to like four o'clock in the morning. And the club closed at one thirty, So you could easily like took her after you got off of work. I said, oh, man, this is crazy. <laughs> that, that, you got to you got to watch. Watch those first two episodes. It's called The Innocent File. Mm-hmm. And, and it's more episodes. I think it's like a total of eight. Right. But the first two was that that story. So I guess the third episode would be like a whole nother story. You know what I mean? Right. It was real good, but it just shows you like how fucked up like this world is and how quick they is to close the case and just blame the wrong person. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else? Uh, I told you I watched Black Adam. No, TV shows. Oh, TV, TV I'm shows? sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, TV shows. I can't think of nothing else. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same. I had uh, the BMF. Um, you don't watch Your Honor on uh, Showtime. Uh-uh. Is it good? Uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, Michael Cranston. Is it My- Brian Cranston? Uh, Brian, yes. Okay, yeah, he's the, the judge. Okay, I did see. I see the previews of it. Yeah. Um, looked at the that, the that it just started the second season. Looked uh-uh. at that, that uh, episode. Um, what else? Nothing really else is out there. Oh, uh, the Dahmer thing. I, I don't know what episode I'm on. It might be like five or six. Mm-hmm. I'm at the episode where uh, I had to do a whole lot of fast forwarding when he killed the, when he was going into the gay bathhouse mm-hmm. and he killed the guy and, and moving in the suitcase. This mm-hmm. guy was killing folks and since like 84 <laughs> and always got away with it. And the cops just turned a blind eye. Oh, he's a, he's a kid and he, he, he's not the guy we're looking for. Like, Right. Even when the fucking dude's getting away and that family and people out there telling like this guy, this guy, they still let him get away with that shit. I don't right. understand that. Now, now, he went into that fancy hotel. Two guys walks into the fancy hotel and one guy leaving with a suitcase. Mm-hmm. And nobody knows like anything, like what happened. He'd been mm-hmm. killing folks since like 83. A man was naked, running for his life, told the cops, and they still didn't lock his ass up. I was like, what? He went mm-hmm. on the streets, oh, this is my boyfriend, he had too much to drink, and they let him take that man right back in the house. That was the, uh, you talking about the the, the little boy, mm-hmm. that that he uh, he did something to his head, and he was like discombobulated. Yeah, and, my thing. yeah, and the girls, the girls was telling them that, like, no, he don't live there. He ain't from there and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So they ain't listen to the to the girls, and they they just only listen to him and bore him right back in that house. He was a minor, and the cops just let it ride. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why he constantly kept getting away with doing stuff like this. They said uh, that uh, he won a war for Dharma, but a lot of people was upset about it. Yeah, I seen it. I seen that he won a war. I don't know about that. I don't know about that other part. Why? Because it was uh, I guess it was, it was a substance speech. He was like, if it wasn't for the victims, you know, to tell their story or whatever. But people, I guess, people was upset about it. She ain't know more about it than me. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about that. Okay, now on a movie front, uh, how did you like Black Adam? Uh, I liked it. I mean, like you said, we the shit that we talked about was a little bit of stupid shit in there. Right. But I like I like the special effects. I like that the action. I like how powerful he was. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that was decent. I right. thought the bad guy died way too easy. He should have put more work in before he died. Mm-hmm. Main villain. But yeah, yeah, I like. I thought like you can't do a movie where you talk in a foreign language, you got an accent, all that, and then later on in life you sp- speaking proper English. <laughs> yeah, like, like you mentioned that. I thought that was kind of stupid. They should have just had when he was a kid talking to his dad. They should have been talking proper English the whole time. That way it'd be more believable once they're older talking that way. Right, right. Any other movies? <laughs> uh, movies. Um, what was that movie I told you I watched? Uh, that was, it was a horror movie, but it was good. I liked it. Not Barbarian. No, it was after that. Uh, it was that's a- I just. It was a horror John. I said, oh, I like that John. It was decent. I can't think of it right now. It'll come to me. 
I think mm-hmm. I told you about it before, but I don't know if you watched it, but I said you should check it out when you get a chance. No, anything else? One of the horror movies I watched recently, and I said it was good. Do you remember? It was a horror movie I watched recently, and I said it was good, but you fell asleep on it. And I smile. I did watch Smile. Did I talk to you about that? No. Yeah, that was. It might have been that one. It might have been Smile. I thought it was something else, but it could have been Smile. That was a good horror movie. Mm-hmm. And Shay fell asleep on it, and uh, nothing really. Just you know mm-hmm. what I mean? okay. Now this should be an episode in itself. That damn. I I did take Philip advice and watch that damn Barbarian, and what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> The the movie the movie should have been over. It's just like Black Panther. The movie should have been over in five minutes because they got a the girl had got a Airbnb and they messed up and it was somebody already in the in the house. She would have got up, got her stuff, and got out of there. She'd have never went in that house. That's number one. And then she went in the house. She sat on a toilet. She sat on an Airbnb toilet. No tissue underneath or anything. I'm like, what the hell? So she just walk in the house and just sit on the toilet that ain't hers? That don't I make that was, sense. I thought that was good because it was so stupid. And I can't believe somebody would get an Airbnb in the shittiest rundown hoodest neighborhood. And then when you see somebody live there, you still going to go in. Not live there, but somebody else already got it. You still going to go in with this total stranger. Right. Now, now, okay, let's let's take that aside. Let's just say uh, she... Okay, well, first of all, like Philip said, that it was pitch dark outside, so she couldn't really see the neighborhood. So she only noticed the neighborhood uh, the next day. She walked out, and that was like the only nice house. <laughs> the, the only not house nice house, it was the only house. Yeah. Up raggedy. Right. So, uh, okay, let's just say she did go over there and uh, spend, the, spend the, uh, the night. Okay, she had a job interview. Now, wouldn't you would have took your stuff with you? Exactly. Not, why, would and, she come, why would she come back? Right. You supposed to say, thank God I didn't get killed last night, but uh hey, I'm out of here. Never again. Right. And and uh is they it was some convention going on and the hotels was booked. It's damn Detroit. There ain't no uh, Detroit is a major city. It is no <laughs> way in the world all hotels is booked in Detroit. Mm-hmm. I would have drove around until I found me a hotel, went to the hotel, and then I would the next day after my job interview, I would have got with them Airbnb people and raised hell and made them pay. For my doing hotel stay yeah. before I went home. All right. So, like Philip said, she went back in the house. Come to find out, uh, it's a, a a long hallway in the basement. So uh she went, she looked in there and she heard all this noise and she left. The roommate, the roommate, uh no, the, the person was trying to ch- chase her, right? And she uh, was trapped in the basement because the door had shut. Under uh, the basement door had shut. She couldn't open it. That wasn't so, the guy that was chasing her. That was like the fucking other shit. She was looking for the guy. No, 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 no. The guy was, yeah, she was looking for the guy, but the guy was, uh, when I say the guy, the, I'm talking about the monster. You, I keep saying the guy because, uh, you know, that was a man in a, in a woman's suit. So, 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 no, 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 no. I'm, when, when you say the guy, it was a guy that rented the Airbnb before her. Yeah. That's when you say guy, I'm thinking you're talking about him. Yeah, you know, yeah, that was my mistake because the, the monster was played by a man in a in a woman's suit. Okay. And uh, uh I was I was was saying the guy, the guy, I'm sorry. I'll just say the monster. The monster was chasing her, and it was the, the basement window. The 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 uh roommate had came back home and she was banging on the door waiting for him. So so he pushed so they got the window open and pushed her out. So she's explaining to him what was going on in there. So he guess what he wants to do? He wants to go and inspect it to him for himself. Instead of saying, hey, look, let's open this door and get all our shit and get the fuck up out of here. No, he wants to inspect it himself. But see, so I'm he, curious like that too. So I might have would have inspected, but I would have had like a gun, a couple homies with me. Yo, let's go down here and see what's down here, like on that tip. Mm-hmm. So Day goes to inspect it. The droopy tit monster, the droopy big tit monster grabs him and bashes his head in the wall. So, okay, now we go to a scene where it's the uh, the Airbnb's owner is like this Hollywood dude. 
he gotten in trouble for sexual harassment and he had to come back to Detroit. So he goes and he goes and gets his police. He goes in there and he sees all their stuff in there. So he like, well, wait a minute. Is somebody in here? It's, it's like everything that was in there was theirs. And so he called the lady and, and said, was it, was this somebody supposed to be in here? And she said, no. Like nine times out of ten, there's somebody in there. There's all this shit in there. Mm-hmm. So he goes into the ba- basement and he sees it. He sees the hall, long hallway. So he walks out. And he goes on the computer and and uh, <laughs> he goes on the computer and and uh they say you know you can get more money for for each type of square footage a uh, house you have and the basement counts as like your square footage <laughs> so he said oh shit so he gets the world's longest ruler <laughs> and he <laughs> and he takes the ruler and goes all throughout the throughout this hallway to try to measure it so he could try to get more money. So the big titty monster, the big titty droopy tit monster capture, captures him and puts him in like a, a, it was like a ditch with a, with a, with a, a gate over it. So our girl is there. So she, so they're like little talking, whatever. So the, 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 the tit monster uh, uh, goes over and gives him a bottle of her precious uh, breast milk. And so she was like, the girl said, look, take the milk. And so he's like, no, I don't want the milk. He's like, well, take the milk. I swear, if this thing would want me to drink that milk, I would have drunk that damn milk. And stay alive, shit. E- exactly. So she like, look, take the milk, take the milk. And so the the monster gives the uh her precious milk to the to the girl. So she drunk the milk. And so now the monster opens the gate and trying to force him to take the milk, and sh- he wouldn't take it. So so she goes. So the monster grabs the dude and takes him into a room where she tries to take her precious nips and puts it in his mouth for him to, to, to taste her precious breast milk. And he's like, no, no, no. <laughs> you, Did the you monster must- think you, you, you her baby? That means she's not going to hurt you. Exactly. So you play the game until you get away. You don't sit there and be all fighting and carrying on so she can kill you. Exactly. This is why our homegirl survived because she did all that shit. So why they all so so when a tit monster was wrestling with the guy, this was the girl's escape. She's like, all right, look, I got a shot. So she got out of there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so how did the guy escape from the tit monster? I know he did escaped. He? He yeah, escaped, but, didn't? yeah. Uh-huh. Remember, oh, he had went into the room and the old man was there. The mm-hmm. old man killed herself for some unknown reason. I don't know why. So uh how did the girl, uh, the, the girl, the girl got out. She broke the window because the, what's the name was, uh, the, uh, the basement door was shut. So she broke that basement window and she got in the car. Mm-hmm. And how did the guy get out? I can't remember. Mm-hmm. I, it, was, it was a good, stupid horror film. No, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't good at all. When it I say good, good, I meant entertaining. It wasn't entertaining at all. It was entertaining. That's what I, you're I, talking about. Some old big old tit monster. This woman with the droopy tits, tits down to her damn waist, is chasing people down the street. And uh, okay, well, she, I forget uh, how they got out, but she had not a, really. She wasn't really a monster. She was like a deformed person. Yeah, because the guy kept inbreeding and inbreeding, and that's right. that's what happened. Right. And uh, so she got in the car, and the tit monster was about to chase her. So she hit her with the car. And and she st- got the the tit monster in between the house and the car, so she escaped. So my man comes out, and he had got out, and so they're like, "Well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do?" So uh, why well, didn't get into his car? I forget. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Who saved her? The the homeless dude in the neighborhood that sa- yeah. saved her. The homeless dude in the neighborhood saved her, and I'm missing a whole lot of stuff too. It the is. whole lot of in betweens. So the 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 uh, homeless dude saves her. And uh, he was like telling her, break, breaking down, like what was going on. Oh no, she ain't never coming here. And give a guess what happened? She came into his into your spot. Yep. And so they chased uh, the the tit monster chased the uh, the guy and the gal up this water well. So they go up to the top, and my man turned turned on her and Double pushed her. The, yeah, pushed her out, and the tit monster jumped and saved her, saving his baby. So he goes down there. Instead of him running away, he goes to inspect what was going on. <laughs> so she so she survived because the tit monster took the fall. 
and the tip monster uh 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 crushed his crushed his head. Mm-hmm. And so our girl shot the tit monster, and that's how she got away. Oh, I don't know what was so entertaining about this movie, Phil. Just, just was, listening, you tell the story is entertaining, so it, it must be entertaining. It, it was more entertaining me telling the story than what I, what I, what you actually saw. It was a big old tit monster chasing people down the street, and trying to give give everybody her precious milk. She wasn't chasing people down the street. She was chasing people in her house in the basement. Well, she was. She got in the street at the end of the movie. Yeah, but that was just at the end of the movie. That wasn't like this was what was going on through the movie. Yes, and you got to see her her tits. Her tits was big, big and floppy. Well, they, you know, you ever notice they they do stuff like that in these horror movies? Because that's not the first monster I've seen like that. Uh, this is this not your first tit monster? No, nope. sure enough, man. That's probably like the third or fourth. <laughs> So you don't you say you don't watch horror movies like that. No. But that's like a new thing. And then the same with like uh monsters and, and stuff crawling on all four, but they're human. That's like right. something they, they they run the same type of fucking script in these movies. <laughs> I just thought about it. Hold on. What was the movie about the family? That's the one I was trying to tell you about that you fell asleep on. And I said I really liked it. Remember it was a couple and they went like uh and where did they go? They went to like Ireland or something to stay with another family. You know what I'm talking about, Big? It was a couple and they went to Ireland or something like that to stay with another family in France or something in the back. You know what I'm talking about? Talking, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, the movie, it was a family, a couple, and their and their daughter. Mm-hmm. And they went to stay with another couple that they met and their kid. The one we just watching. Like in France or something like that, in England or something. Asleep, it was up. Yeah. The movie, I don't know what it was called. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. We had it as our one of our favorites. Did you take it out? Oh, I can't think of it. You got to watch it because that ending is going to shock the mess out of you. <laughs> uh, are, are you sure? Yeah. Because <laughs> huh? you told me to watch this movie. It sounded like you enjoyed it too. No, I did not. You ain't turned it off so that way you enjoyed it. Well, I'm already invested. It wasn't no sense to turn it off. <laughs> oh, let me see. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Wait. Well, why are you looking at that? Um, you know what I, it's called? Is, is, is it hear, hear No Evil or See No Evil? Let me see. Uh, what you saying, Roy? Uh, why are you looking at that? I looked at uh, Top Gun. Um, it was it was uh, enjoyable. Nothing nothing to go out your way and uh, watch uh-huh. it. But, uh, yeah. I, I want to know that all this stuff goes on when they uh, have a uh, fighter jets like this oh and i oh i get props to the special effects because it really looks like they're in the cockpit too mm-hmm. by the way uh, uh enjoyable if you don't have anything to do on a, on a saturday or something you can put that on i mean mm-hmm. i wouldn't go out i wouldn't go out my way to look at it but no yeah evil. say it speak again no, speak no evil check it out when you get a chance oh brother it came out. It came out this year. It's about a, a family, like a, a dude, his wife, and their kid, and they're like vacationing uh somewhere in the Dutch, Dutch somewhere like that, Danish, mm-hmm. and they stand with another couple that they met, but the uh, other couple was like mentally fucked up, and you got to see the dumb shit that this guy allows this other family to manipulate and do to them, and his wife, she had a little bit of brains, but she was stupid too, mm-hmm. and in the end, they paid for that shit. Uh, uh, going back to Barbarian, it was a nice little uh, plot. How in the beginning they almost try to make it seem like the roommate was the was the bad guy. Right, I thought he was the bad guy from the jump too. Some old Def- Jeffrey Dahmer type shit. Yeah, yeah, they try to make like it was him, and then uh, uh, she was attracted to him. And I always thought I thought they was going to sleep together. I did too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, Barbarian, Top Gun. That was the only movies I looked at. Oh, I looked at some. Um, I looked at a Donnie Yen movie. I forget the name of it. It was. It was in. Um, uh, it was an Asian film with Donnie Yen. You know who Donnie Yen is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was one of his movies. And the thing I always give Asian movies props, action movies, is because when they do action, it's them. Because you know we we we're now in the phase where these action movies ain't nothing but special effects. And uh, their movies is still like old school, old school uh, stunt scenes and stuntmen and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. 
You, you got work tomorrow? No. Okay. Find some time to between today and tomorrow to watch that you don't speak no evil because I want to I want you to uh, talk about that one. That shit is disturbing. I just sent you a little thing about it and so you'll remember it and you can see what they say about it too. Like the ending, that shit is disturbing. Oh goodness. Uh oh. I gotta be. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's a foreign film. It's not a. Uh... Yeah, it's a foreign. It's a foreign film. It's in English though. Oh okay. All right. I mean, you probably it's probably really not in English, but you know they got like uh, voiceovers or whatever. Mm hmm. But it was, it was good. <laughs> twisted and weird. And if anybody listening that like twisted, weird horror flicks, check it out. Okay. Uh, speak no evil. And it came out in uh, de- September. That's the same uh, day uh, Barbarian came out. The, uh, the September the 9th. Probably. I put it on my favorites. And I put both of them on my favorites at the same time. So then I watched the Barbarian. Then I turned around and watched this one. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at PNL Judgmentals. Oh, Facebook also at PNL Judgmentals. Instagram at the two underscores Judgmentals. Uh, YouTube is that at sign uh, PNL Judgmentals. Or you can email us at PNL Judgmentals at gmail.com. Uh, thank you for your movie uh, suggestions, Phil. I really enjoyed it. I can tell. I heard it. <laughs> oh, 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 no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. That big tit monster is going to haunt me. To <laughs> to <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. Hold the phone. You think all I do is rap? I can do it on my own. That's why I produce the track. Don't wonder where my crew is at. They'll be back. Niggas see me walking on the block and look like, who is that? Who is that? People always wanna know where my friends is at. Like, we attach. I don't need no crew to produce the same effect. How lame is that? Niggas say that we drawling, but really we balling. They mad cause they falling.